Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin with promising news for hundreds of Canadians stranded at the centre of China's coronavirus outbreak. The federal government says it's making progress on an evacuation plan and it's working to make sure families aren't separated. A number of other countries, including Germany, the U.S. and the U.K., have already airlifted citizens out of the outbreak zone. When Canadians will be airlifted remains unclear. Our government says it's still waiting for Chinese approval. Meanwhile, the novel coronavirus outbreak continues to spread. The number of cases continues to soar tonight, with more than 20,000 reported around the world. The death toll is also rising. It's now at 426. In our top story tonight, Mike LeCouture reports on the growing concerns among Canadians in the outbreak zone. But please hurry and please, yeah, please don't split up families. An emotional plea from a stranded mother. Megan Millward is trying to get home to Montreal with her husband and two kids. She and the children are Canadian citizens, so they should be guaranteed seats on an evacuation flight. But it's unclear if her husband, who has permanent resident status, will be left behind in Hubei, China. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do on my own with two kids in quarantine for 14 days. At a media briefing, Foreign Affairs Minister François-Philippe Champagne tried to reassure stranded Canadians that families wouldn't be split up. We have asked the Chinese authority to allow the primary caregivers, whether they're Canadian citizen, permanent resident or Chinese national, to be able to fly with that child in Canada. Um, We receive assurance that uh, China will follow suit on that. So if Millward's husband isn't considered the primary caregiver, will they split up the family? Well, that is still unclear. We do know the government has a plane and a plan for the more than 300 Canadians who want to come back. It will be pre-positioned in Vietnam while waiting for China to give the green light to land in Wuhan. We're uh, working hard with Chinese authorities in terms of bringing people home uh, as quickly as we can. We understand there are many uh, uh, steps, both health and safety steps to be made to, that have to be gone through. One of those steps is the Chinese approval of the flight manifest list. So those Canadians will be allowed through police checkpoints in the city, which is under a lockdown. Once back in Canada, they'll be quarantined for 14 days at CFB Trenton in Ontario. Passengers will be isolated from residents of the base and each other. So if one person falls ill, uh, that won't necessitate the start of an entire another quarantine for all of the passengers. For now, the Canadian government is telling people to avoid non-essential travel to China. But the Canadian military issued a travel ban. In an order to Canadian Forces members on Monday, the country's top soldier, General Jonathan Vance, told soldiers to cancel any travel to or through China. Vance's order said it's too much of a health risk to the military's readiness capabilities. Robin. Mike LeCouture in Ottawa. As Mike mentioned, Canada is still waiting for China to approve the evacuation plan. When that happens, a number of steps are in place to help prevent any potential spread of the virus. Every passenger will be screened by both Chinese and Canadian authorities before boarding the plane in China. During the flight, passengers will be monitored by Canadian Forces medical team. If they become ill, they will be moved to an isolated area of the plane and treated. When the plane lands at CFB Trenton in Ontario, all travellers will be again screened. They will then remain at the base for 14 days to ensure they are clear of the virus. Back at the centre of the outbreak, a massive new hospital is up and running after being built in just over a week. Over the last 10 days, cameras have been rolling as construction crews work around the clock to build the 1,000-bed facility. Authorities had ordered the project to help deal with Wuhan's severe hospital bed shortage. The facility will reportedly focus on treating people infected with the new coronavirus. As you saw there, the Chinese government is working fast to try to contain the outbreak. But as Eric Sorensen explains, those efforts are doing little to ease growing economic concerns. In parts of China, drones equipped with audio messages are telling Chinese citizens not to gather in public. This woman is being told to go home and rest, and off she goes. China's high-tech and low-tech capacity to impose order is being tested. From the remarkably swift construction of new hospitals to Chinese officials telling people not to go outside, the country is desperately trying to contain the spread of the coronavirus. 
It's asking the world for more protective medical gear, but it's also trying to contain the message of fear. China is navigating between greater openness while urging the international community not to overreact. The World Health Organization is helping with that message. If we invest in fighting at the epicenter, at the source, then the spread to other countries is minimal and also slow. The spread of the novel coronavirus looks alarming. Cases have now been reported in 25 countries, but the epicenter remains in China. As of this afternoon, there were more than 17,000 cases in China, including Hong Kong and Macau, but in the rest of the world, only about 160 cases. The number of deaths paints a picture far less alarming, except for China. Deaths there, 361, about 95% in central Hubei province. Outside China, only one death reported in the Philippines. The numbers are rising, but as of this afternoon, China remains the one global hotspot. Empty streets show a serious response in China, but also signal a sharp downturn in the country's economy. Coming off the Lunar New Year holiday, the Chinese stock market plunged 8%. China is now such an integral part of the international economy that global economic growth is forecast to drop 0.2%. The epidemic has a growing impact on the economy, says this Chinese official, but he adds we are completely confident to win the battle controlling this disease. But many countries are taking no chances. Indonesia has stopped flights to and from China. Hong Kong has now closed all but three border crossings to mainland China. From Australia to Belgium, quarantines are being established. It is a balancing act for China and the world. Respond swiftly and with urgency but without stoking so much fear that it could harm the global economy more than necessary. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.